it's getting windy. Morning, everybody. Afternoon. Morning, everybody. Evening, wherever it is that, whatever it is, wherever you are. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the railroad. Anyway, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a tour today. We're gonna go in the shop. If you can hear me over the wind, we're gonna go over the sh into the shop, and I'll go over what's going on with the Pulse of 70 first. Jeez, Louise, a freaking wind is starting to pick up. It's winter up here. Cinderella back from the ball is the 70. The mainstay engine for our organization is gonna be this locomotive. This engine is gonna be the face of the railroad moving forward. She was built in 1922 and is a 282 logging Mikado. We love her, she's great to run, great to fire. The general public loves the hell out of it. She's gonna be our main engine that we run starting off, primarily because she's the engine that needs the least amount of work. What we're doing is we're getting the engine ready for a annual, which means that we have to inspect the entire locomotive to make sure that it's running to make sure that it's mechanically sound to go out and pull service for a year and then we're going to have to go through that dome right there inside the boiler and do an inter internal inspection to make sure the boiler is in uh, good shape to run we pulled the draw bar out it's actually underneath this which was a table that we put together hurriedly for our volunteer uh, first volunteer meeting we're gonna have to go inside the firebox and inspect it. For, for the most part, the engine really doesn't need that much. Most of the annual things have been checked off. For all intents and purposes, she's ready to go. Next, we'll go over and we'll check out the 17. Wander around all this crap sitting in here just to get to it. This engine, as everybody knows, this is our Alco built 282. Everybody gets it wrong because it's not a minaret because a minaret's a 2102. This is our Alco built 282 logging tank engine. What's going on with this engine is this engine is probably not going to make an appearance for mm, a year or so unless we raise the money and, and uh, get the time to solve some serious gremlins. Primarily the lead truck and the trailing truck need to be completely and totally rebuilt they are to the point well a rear truck it doesn't like going around corners anymore and this bearing over here is starting to run hot because of how much how much it's just worn out in 2018 we went through and put all brand new rod brasses in it we completely rebuilt both the crossheads also there's a problem and i can't i don't have the light to be able to show you but right inside here there is some serious metal deterioration going on. Firebox side of the sheets inside the firebox are getting really thin to the point where they are starting to leak quite regularly. On top of that, there's water cascading down the tube sheets from several cracks in the legs. This engine is not gonna be ran for quite some time until we have the ability to get in there, figure out what's going on for one, and then for two, finding the time and the money to be able to fix it. That's gonna be the other big problem is that, you know, to do major boiler repairs, um, that's not cheap, even if you're doing it in house. It's not cheap and it takes a lot of time. By the time we actually get to the point where we're gonna be able to start to repair this engine, we're probably gonna be money ahead just to do a full 1472 form four on it gut the boiler gut the tubes out of it fix all the problems that it has and then um move forward in operation with the full 15 year ticket and we'll go over this in other videos on where we're covering managing the preservation side of this and i can't go without going down here and showing everybody the five because i know people are going to be asking about it the five is currently not on any type of list to repair or do anything with which is very unfortunate because this would be a good little engine it's the engine that i grew up on 
and it's been the face of the Mount Rainier Scenic Railroad for many, many, many years. The problems with the 5 are it's got major boiler issues, and it's got major running gear issues. For the most part, it is flat clapped out. That's just where, where it is. It's just flat clapped. We'll go over passenger cars later because as you can see, we got two passenger car rebuilds going on right next to each other. The sats up is the sats up. Um, we'll go over each one of these locomotives is going to have its own video about what it is, where it is, and where it came from at some point in time. But we'll go over to the gear house. I'll show you guys what's going on over there. In here is, we call it the geared house. This is where all of our geared locomotives are kept. Um, you got the Heisler, Willamette, Shea, Climax. I guess I'll start on this side of the room because everybody's probably going to be asking what's going on with these. The Heisler, we're not going to do anything with it for quite some time. Um, we'd love to fire it up and run it. We'd love to do all that, but it needs a full 15 year. It needs a full running gear rebuild and we don't have the time or the money to be able to do it. Climax is in the same boat. Love to fire it up, love to go run it, love to do stuff. We don't have the money or time to take care of a geared locomotive. Shea, unfortunately, is in the same boat. Um, you know, it, it needs a lot of work. These things were ran until they were just completely worn out and then given to preservation organizations. And good majority of the time, preservation organizations don't have the time or the money to be able to keep going and fix stuff. They kind of operate under that. If there's some life left in a park, why not use that life up? And what you wind up with is engines that are flat clapped. The Willamette is probably the best in the bunch as far as where it's at mechanically. In 2018, I do believe, the machinist and I went through and put all brand new horn brasses, which are the brasses that are underneath this cap, which we call a hockey puck. We built and machined all brand new hockey pucks that you can use just a regular one inch drive ratchet to put in and take out with a little zert fitting on it to be able to grease them. We went through and did a little bit of work to the engine, but the engine itself is just flat clapped. Um, so everything else, as far as it's concerned with this engine, it's, it's iffy. It needs brasses, it needs a lot of work, but the boiler is in the best in great shape. There is a chance that we might be able to raise some money up to be able to get the boiler done on this one, but don't hold me to it because it's probably not going to happen. The boiler's dead this year. We have to do a full 14, uh, 15 year on it. And you know, when you're running gears versus rods, we'll go into that later in a different video, but when you're running gears versus rods, it's, uh, Unfortunately, they're just kind of for show and when you're putting the amount of money and effort into a geared engine and you can't run it, generate good revenue with it, then you're kind of going backwards right from the very beginning. And we don't want to go backwards, we want to move forwards. The 70 and the 17 for right now are going to be the main locomotives that we, that we dedicate a lot of our time and resources to to keep running because the 70 and the 17 can maintain the schedule for the run that we're looking at doing. And we are actually looking at the possibility of a third locomotive. Whatever locomotive that might be, whether it's the five, whether it's an engine that's not here that we might be able to get, who knows? But we are looking at the possibility of a third locomotive because for the railroad that Beth and I are envisioning, uh, we need three good rod engines to be able to make what we're wanting to do possible. We got to find another engine, wherever it might be. Folks can uh, donate. There's a link down in the description. All donations are very much welcome. Very much welcome because honestly, this place doesn't run on hopes and dreams. It runs on money. And we lost our main benefactor in uh, Tom Murray. And we're just kind of doing this from scratch. Maybe want to donate? Click on the link below, it'll take you over the Whipham site and uh, donate through that portal. If not, like and subscribe. That does help the channel out and it does get people out there to be able to watch this. So with that, I'm gonna let you guys hang for a couple of days and then we'll go over something, something else in a different video.